Imagine a city the size of Paris with 2.2 million residents and another 10 million in the surrounding metro area becoming 100% self-reliant on producing all its needs from legumes, fruits, vegetables, and roots by turning its rooftops, parks, industrial areas, in addition to commercial and government buildings into sustainable urban farms. Sounds rather far-fetched since much of the metro Paris area is urbanized and is also full of industrial and commercial areas, which coupled with limited empty land would not be even remotely enough space to provide the city with its food needs. However, that is not stopping the city from pursuing the goal of becoming the first city in the world that feeds itself. Why is Paris so determined to achieve such a colossal urban farming mega project, and how are they going to do it? The French are not reinventing the wheel but rather reintroducing it on a massive and more sustainable scale because urban farming is as ancient as human civilization itself. More than 5,500 years ago, the farmers of Mesopotamia used to allocate land lots for farming inside the ancient walled city, even though they had access to plenty of fertile land outside the walls. The same was done in small towns across large swaths of Persia's deserts by feeding water to waterless towns via aqueducts from the mountains. The concept of modern urban farming for profit and to mitigate climate change is hard to trace to any particular location in the world. However, it has been gaining steam across the world in the past two decades, and now it is fashionable, rewarding, and increasingly becoming a profitable green solution. This leads us to the question of why is Paris in particular so determined to become the world's urban farming center and the world's first large city that feeds itself? As you already know, agriculture-related emissions of CO2 account for approximately 11% of global greenhouse gas emissions. But here is the paradox. Farms absorb twice the CO2 that they release. So where is the 11% coming from? It mostly comes from the supply chain to establish and maintain modern profitable farms, the fertilizers industry, the machinery used within the farms, and the transportation of produce to stores and markets. These facts, coupled with the fact that farms cleanse the air and make urban areas more beautiful and relaxing, encouraged Paris to undertake such an endeavor, which is nothing short of being a Paris-wide mega urban agriculture project. There is also the issue of price. Life in Paris is not cheap. The average person needs about 50 euros or 55 US dollars per day worth of food which is quite steep and for good reasons. Much of the produce is transported long distances and on many occasions requires special storage, hence the high prices. This means a family of four would need as much as $6,000 per month just for food, which is insanely high since the average family income in Paris is around $8,000. To solve this problem while making the city more beautiful and contributing to the global fight against CO2 and methane emissions, vegetables, fruits, roots, and even legumes can simply be planted on building roofs, which contributes to energy savings in home gardens, balconies, parks, community gardens, abandoned parking lots, and other empty, useless spaces and buildings, and even inside old warehouses and industrial facilities. This is why Paris is leading the world's cities in becoming 100% food efficient. Additionally, there is something else that did not cross the minds of the experts who are involved in the urban farming revolution. It is the issue of freshness and culinary arts. If there is one thing the French are truly famous for, other than wine and cheese, of course, it is the notorious authentic French cuisine, which is, needless to say, a tourist attraction by itself and a very important segment of French culture, and is often linked with Michelin stars. In fact, many Parisian chefs, restaurants, hotels, and food sellers already offer people money to rent out their roof gardens or buy their fresh produce as long as it meets their standards. 
It is important to note here that urban farming is not the same as vertical farming. While both of these types of farming aim to achieve the same goals, vertical farming is much more complex and requires plenty of experience and sadly energy too, because it is an indoor technology that consumes more energy for LED lighting than farmers can handle. Meanwhile, urban farming is an extremely cheap and simple form of outdoor farming that does not require special facilities, artificial lighting, or anything else overly complex. It is important to point out here that urban farming does involve some vertical aspects that contribute to higher yields and less water consumption. The most effective technology used for such a purpose is PVC pipes. PVC pipes are not all that different from the pipes used in plumbing, with the exception that a great deal of effort is invested in producing the pipes that are aimed for urban farming in a sustainable manner via the use of recycled materials and bamboo. These pipes allow advanced techniques of urban agriculture to be applied via aquaponics and aeroponics, which are state-of-the-art growth systems that work without the use of soil and enable construction of light structures adapted to roofs. Instead of soil, a coconut substrate is used, which is also known as coir substrate, an organic and naturally occurring product used mainly as a growing soilless substrate for horticulture applications. The coconut substrate is derived from the external husk of a coconut, which is an environmentally renewable product. In 2020, Paris began utilizing the technology in mega urban farms, including the amazing 14,000 square meters garden on the roofs of the Versailles Exhibition Park, making it one of the largest in the world. This colossal project, among many others across Paris and France, was a result of the hard work of the startup firm Agripolis, which is leading the urban farm revolution in France. Thanks to such farms today, Paris no longer has to get its tomatoes from 1,500 kilometers away. Technically speaking, anyone can make both vertical or multi-level horizontal PVC pipe structures for urban farming. Mind you, that simple technology means as many as 20 plants are planted on the footprint of one plant using conventional farming methods. Since no soil is needed and the structures are light, even a 50 meters square roof or garden or any other outdoor or partially indoor space can produce the same amount of, let's say, tomatoes grown in a 500 square meters traditional farm. There are many online videos that detail how such systems are constructed step by step, but keep in mind that plants need proper nutrition daily. Additionally, ready kits can be found in many stores, such as Walmart. In France, the best system used is called the vertical PVC structure, in which bamboo-supported vertical columns of PVC pipes are installed next to each other and not spread in rows on the ground. In France, more than 4,000 square meters have been planted in such a manner that allows more than 30 types of plants to be automatically watered and fertilized, while 90% of the water used is recycled. In large-scale urban farms, computer-controlled hydroponic and aeroponic systems mean 80% less water consumption and 62% fewer CO2 emissions than a conventional farm for the same yield, which is quite impressive. Agripolis currently runs several urban farms across Paris, with some located on the roofs of hotels, municipal swimming pools, and gyms. They even built one on top of a water purification station. Other Parisian initiatives include a mushroom farm in a former parking lot that distributes its produce within a 15-kilometer radius, and a 7,000-square-meter farm whose greenhouse is heated by 300 servers from a data center. In conclusion, the whole city of Paris has been turned into a mega urban farming project that will be completed in phases over the next two decades. As a result, Paris, which currently looks like a brown grayish block from afar, will steadily and surely turn into a green sustainable paradise that feeds itself and also become healthier as the air quality and local climate become better. So do you think a mega city such as Paris, New York, or London can turn every roof, empty building, balcony, park, and empty space into a vertical PVC urban farm? And why aren't such sustainable farming methods implemented on a large scale on existing farms in rural areas? Let us know in the comments section and please like, share, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. Thank you.